Oh, yeah. few seconds behind on here. Hello, can you hear me out there? 20 viewers, huh? We, yeah. It's a... Can you see? I can't see. Can you guys hear, hear me? Give me a thumbs up or so, out there. My hun is watching. Jen, can you hear me? That's the, that's the screen right now up there. Oh, right there? Oh, there's like four screens right here. There's no reason. <laughs> so I'll start. I'd like to greet all, all my relatives out there in, uh, in our native land. Uh, a few weeks ago, we've been, we started this just to practice and try to get our, our, our voices back into shape. And we just missed, uh, I'm just seeing Brent's uh, comment there. <laughs> Jeez, that guy. Anyhow, uh, uh, just kind of lost me off my track. Brent is saying, take off your clothes. <laughs> I can't hear you. <laughs> Jeez, that guy. So anyhow, uh. Just lost, lost my train of thought there. Anyhow, so we started this a few weeks ago, just uh, singing, and then a couple weeks ago we thought, uh, hey, why don't we uh, sing a few old songs? Because I wanted to sing some of uh, the songs where I first started, like on Sweetgrass Singers. So last week we sang some songs there to uh, honor and pay tribute to my big brother, Sweetgrass Singers. Then after we were done, that's when I announced we were gonna sing we wanted to sing some porcupine songs. For porcupine singers were uh, one of the first uh, groups my cousin Ross Paskerman told me about. Like he, and he told me that they were from uh, South Dakota. And from what we learned from about powwows was uh, in our Cree language, we call powwow bwatsimu, which means the Sioux dance. So we always recognize that. And so if you ever hear in a lot of uh, the Cree groups, we, a lot, lot of groups, we use that, that word botsimo in there. It's just it's paying honor to where we know where this uh, powwow originally came from. Well, well, it was shown to us, our people from the Sioux, the Lakota. Sorry about that. To be technically correct there, the Lakota, Dakota. But we have Nakota up here too. And then uh, that's also a branch of the Sioux. I mean, the, the Pateoyate, I'll say instead. So, uh, this first song uh, we're going to sing is uh, the Porcupine Drum Song. It's on a level, level of difficulty. It was right up there for us there. It took a few days. We even had to have a practice a few days ago to try and get that song. And hopefully we, we got it, though. Because uh, Lakota in the... In Cree are very different languages, so we had to uh, had to uh, ask Brent and uh, Hokey there for a lot of the words there for these songs. So I'm just uh, privileged to uh, once once uh, Whitney put the, put it out there that we were gonna do this and had a lot of uh, response, like looking forward to it. It kind of made 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 me a little nervous there, but I I kind of like being nervous when we sing that. I always kind of do a little better, brings up that energy. But anyhow, so I was really, uh, really honored that uh, these men, uh, these old singers there, spoke, spoke, spoke their words and uh, shared their teachings, some of their teachings with uh, the people out there. And it's good for young people to hear these, these what, what, what these guys now in their 70s, 80s, 60s, 50s, like what they were told when they started singing. And it's good to, for these young guys out here, because myself, I never got to meet the old porcupine until way later. And that was like just Jim, and I might have shook hands with some of these guys there, and I didn't get to meet uh, Melvin finally officially there back in when I was a head drum judge in Rapid a few years ago. 
So I'm, I'm really grateful that he, he carried that, that drum name on. And so hopefully in following that same suit, maybe my sons too will carry on my drum name too. So, But so the first song we're gonna sing is the Porcupine Drum Song. Huh? Hey, 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 hey. 
see what the comments are. Yeah, that was a really nerve-wracking song. It was really, really an honor to sing that, to be shown the words to that song. I've always heard that song since I started singing in 83. And uh, so one of the things I noticed when, when I first bought a, a porcupine tape, I believe it's the one where all those, those, a lot of these iconic songs are on, like they're old veteran songs and... Anyhow, on that uh, on on that one straight song, yeah, I really noticed. I used to listen to it back then, and I would just study almost everything on there, and then uh, hear hear the different voices there, and hear the certain guys there just come in with with killer bass, and hearing the also when they take it up, take it up another notch there, and then just hearing the the old style of cutting, like when we call cutting we just a pickup there, like when you come in early there. Like when the lead comes in, then you cut them a little early. Today it's been kind of modernized. No one really does that anymore. That old way of uh, picking up a song, like after the lead. We we did that for our first few years. Then some of the guys that came onto the crew asked if we can uh, just wait till the end of a start because they had a hard time uh, cutting in with us with Dion when he when I would lead. So anyhow. Other thing I noticed too from those old tapes, porcupine tapes, was uh, every once in a while you'll hear uh, that, uh, like when the when the downbeat's coming there, and all of a sudden they'll uh, boom, 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 boom. So I always thought that was cool, and so when I started going to Powell's, I didn't hear it too much. Just up here in the Powell's there, like maybe Mosquito Juniors, I would hear them do that, and it was pretty, it was pretty good to hear that. Didn't hear too many groups back then do that, but now when you look at it there. So when we started singing there, and then about 90, 93, 94, 90, 95 at Skimitsin, they, uh, they made a new contest. They separated singing, and they separated into three groups, and that was uh, to original, southern, and contemporary. Contemporary being us, uh, us uh, I guess, us singers there that like to sing words and that are exciting, I guess. Just, uh, just kidding. But, uh, <laughs> but anyhow... That's, they separated it, and then, uh, and then, so, I, from 2005, I kind of, uh, after my dad passed away, I went to uh, straight song singing, so I got to sing with High Noon, who was also my, one of my heroes, and I got to sing with them, and they, Ron and Ted would travel with me, too, off and on, and then, uh, I got to know a lot of the, the other, the straight song singers to me they're all singers but uh i got to know some of them so one thing that they they kind of a lot of these uh they they uh they they call that too fancy when you do these triple beats or stuff like that but i would like to t tell them well check out this 1974 uh recording of porcupine singers and you'll hear those beats and i don't know how long even before that they were maybe from the 60s even before they were doing that types of beats and also, too, you would uh, hear them making all kind of noises, different singers on those recordings there. Like some will make, make like a barking dog sound, some will make uh, even monkey sounds and the, the crow calls and all kind of sounds. But it was just like, uh, I, I took note of that and it was similar to our, our ceremonies, our Sundance up here. Like when they uh, do the crow call, the after songs and then... Uh, that I was told when you do that, that you're showing the Okamawa te ka, you're showing them that, uh, that you're thankful for life. And uh, so the similar thing too, when you're singing, you're showing that drum, you're showing everything that comes here. Uh, you're, sh you're, you're showing your, your gratitude for life. So when we heard uh, them doing that and other old recordings too of other groups, you'll hear guys making noises and stuff like that after they're done singing, before they start singing throughout the song. And then that's what inspired us on Blackstone to, uh, to always have guys to let their expressions out and, and make noises. It got back to me in 1991 at uh, Bismarck one year, and we did pretty good. Like, we had new songs and we had really good energy. And, uh, but it got back to me that, I guess on the ballots there, they, uh, they, they, they were, 
the drum judges were told that if any groups uh, make noises, a lot of noises, you guys got to deduct them. So at that time, I knew that was directed towards us, like because we were, we really sang like that all the time. But it didn't uh, deter us. We just said, "Oh, we're not singing for money. We're singing because we're we're sing singing for life. We're singing. We're grateful." So that's how I try to continue to teach my sons and my adopted sons, my 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 brothers here, my adopted brothers, all the guys that come into this group and. We've had a lot of singers over the years too, and I'm always, always remember them in my prayers, in my ceremonies, and uh, all the people out there too is what the elders, the orphans, all the children, the people in hospitals, all all of our uh, native people throughout this land. I know throughout these tough times, it's tough because we don't get to go to powers anymore. This is my livelihood. I love. When I was 16 and first started at drum, I thought it was so amazing, and I thought, I want to learn how to sing. I want to do this for the rest of my life if I could. I want to dedicate my life to learning how to be a, take care of that drum. So now this, this man-made sickness there put a stop to a lot, of, a lot of stuff we do, but we still got to believe in our ways. We got to... And it's a good thing too, I've seen. I, at the ceremonies I went to like last year, I noticed there was more people there that you don't normally see there. So that's a good thing that people are kind of going back to our ceremonies. So with the next song, we're gonna sing a, a straight song, one of, another iconic porcupine song. They're all iconic, but this is one of our favorites.
pretty fun. I'm just grateful. Grateful, grateful. You know, give a shout out to my uh, my wife's nephew, Jacob, there. This t-shirt there, well, this sweatshirt. It's actually a sweatshirt in it. It says Tribe Life School of Rocks on there. And this medallion too was given to me from my late uh, brother, Mato Duta, uh, late Kenny, Kenny Merrick Jr. Gave that to me uh, just a few months before he had passed on. there. I don't know what to respond to. Thank you. Hi, hi. Sneeze. Hello. Hello. Howdy. My wife always uh, bugs me for having a Creax accent. When I, anything's supposed to say with a shh, I'll say s. Hi, hi there, Terry. My man, Terry Spoon Hunter. <laughs> Ryan. It's the first time I remember trying to read the I don't, usually don't have the the uh, patience to look through everyone there. Plus two, I moved this thing around all the way. So the next song we're gonna sing was also we I knew this song all the time and I'd always just mumble it there and just make out the words <laughs> the best I could, but since we're doing this, I reached out to, to some of my collas there, and uh, I'll just sh make a shout out to my cola, my cola there, Brent. You hello. But uh, he showed me, showed me the words on this. Uh, the Battle of the Little Bighorn Song is what it's called there. It's in uh, Lakota lyrics. I don't know how. I wish I knew the exact. Uh, information on it, like when it was uh, Chris, wrote Chris Pegram there to see her, uh, not what to say, so I won't. Oh yeah, okay, Leo, Leo Baker, little Battle of the Little Bighorn, that's the one we're gonna sing right now. So, oh, hold on, I'll come right back. Well, I'll show it after the song. I just sent a uh, yo-yo to go out and get uh, our new hoodies there. We got, oh, he's actually back in here. So. There's one right there. Buddy. Where? There's one right there. Oh, right here. I'll watch a I'll tell that story later. So we got some new hoodies here. Yo, you've got him made. It's out of his own pocket, too. He just loves us. <laughs> the reason why we put the, this at the back there, the Treaty, I can't, what does it say? Treaty 6. Up here in Canada, we have uh, different treaties. I think there's, how, how many treaties are there? 11 treaty, 11 areas. So in Alberta and Saskatchewan here, like central Alberta and Saskatchewan there, it's uh, Treaty 6. Like it's mostly, it's uh, Crees and Sodos and uh, Assiniboine, the Stonies or the Iron Nation. But that's, uh, it's, it, it's just to give awareness to, to, to the treaties we signed. It's not saying we're, it's better than anyone. We're proud of all our nations mm -hmm. all over. So this next song is for, for all of our, our warriors that passed on. Thank <laughs> you. 
their siege. So have a little break voice. <coughs> hey 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 hey. Whoopala. Every time that song is sung, Custer dies again. Oh, huh. Right on. So uh <coughs> back in two thousand twelve we went like I said, back in 2005, we started singing straight songs. A lot of my singers I had, like from uh, early 2000s to 2005, they all 
just uh, left to go make their own groups, eh? So and that was good. We remained friends with all of them to this day, and some of them came back, Yo-Yo and Rock, Leo. But uh, so 2012, we went back to uh, contemporary word singing. Anyhow, uh, uh, we traveled around that summer, and it was kind of rough at first, getting kind of trying to get back in the swing of singing uh, word songs because it's different day than straight. Uh, so by the end of uh, September came along and we seen uh, the poster earlier back in August we seen the poster of, uh, of uh, a Cheyenne River celebration there in Eagle Butte. So I told the guys, hey, let's go over there, man. We have, uh, we used to have uh, friends over there. We used to go out there back in the early 90s the Charging Eagles, uh, Little Thunder families. So uh, sure enough, we went went out there and, and then uh, we ended up doing good. So that next year, 2013, we got asked to come back and host. Then again, 2014, we went just to go check it out again. And then again, we, we did real good there. And then we got asked to host again in 2015. So 2015, we hosted both, all four times, uh, Jerry Dearly was one of the announcers. So uh, by 2015, he kind of, uh, kind of let us, uh, let us more in on the, let us know of the, the duties of being a host drum. So he like, he'd call upon us there for certain songs and uh, by Saturday, when, when families were coming up there to, uh, to the committee and asking for songs and they wanted us to sing the song. So that's when Jerry would uh, come and tell me, he said, uh, this family here is having an honor, honor song for so-and-so there. And that, uh, and then like example there, there was a girl there and they, uh, I think a, a princess from Sao Paulo. He said that uh, they're having a, a honor song. They want an honor song for their daughter there, the princess there, and they're gonna have a special and they want uh, you to use her uh, Indian name in there. So we did that about three times on Saturday, then another couple times on Sunday too. We had to, we had, and, but luckily I had some straight songs that I never showed the guys yet, but I was gonna start working on them and putting in words in there. Cause sometimes I'll make them straight and then put words. Sometimes they'll just, I'll just mumble gibberish there and make word, make songs like that, then add in the Cree lyrics. Sometimes I'll make the Cree lyrics right there too. It's just always never the same, but anyhow, so, I showed the guys, hey, let's put put those words in that they want in there. And then we had uh, one of our buddies there, John Eagleshield from Standing Rock. And so he was showing us some Lakota words too. And uh, so, so anyhow, there's this one, uh, John wasn't at the drum, but uh, it was in the afternoon. And then that's when, uh, so Jerry gets out there in front of the drum and he starts talking, saying then, then he turns around and he looks at, looks at us there and bends over towards the drum and he says, this family wants you guys to uh, uh, make a song for, for their daughter here. And then he says her Indian name at that time. He said, her name is Chohangli Wanicha. And then, and he said it about three times and we kind of followed him like repeating what he said. After we had it about three or four more times after that, then he turned around and he started talking, doing the introductions for that special. And he gave us about a good half hour, half hour or more to uh, get that song ready. So <clears throat> I showed the guys a tune, start showing that tune, the straight part. We learned it there and it was a simple tune, a good tune. So uh, after that, uh, John, by then John came back to the drum and then, so I told him he, uh, we told him what was happening. So I told him, and her name is, uh, and then so I asked the guys, what's that, what's that girl's name again? And all the guys just looking at each other, like no one could remember what that name was. <clears throat> and then we're just kind of all thinking, then John asked, well, what does it mean? Uh, we can't remember that either. And we're just singing. And meanwhile, Jerry's right in front of the drum talking there, talking on the, on the mic there. And we were just thinking, we didn't want to go and bug him and say, hey, uh, Jerry, how's that name go again? So we're just really trying to remember, remember that name. And so finally, uh, we're just trying to think about it there. And then finally I kind of go, 
Chicambi. Wasn't it, uh, oh yeah, I remember it had that ah in there. So that's when I said, wasn't it uh, Chokhangli Wanicha? And, that's when, and then I said it again, then I told Rocky and Yo-Yo, and said they, they agreed, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. Then my son Sage, who does our, the lead singing for us there, he's sitting beside Alice, so he goes, that's not how it goes. <laughs> he said, it's Chakangli Wanita. And all of a sudden, because we didn't know, and we're thinking, we all looked at him, really, that's how it is? Yeah. I don't know, man, I don't think that's how it goes. Yeah, that's how it goes. Mom says it at home all the time. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, that's what, oh, then John got there, so we started telling him that, uh, is there a word uh, in uh, Lakota that's called Chakangli Wanita? And then he's going, uh, no, I never heard that. And then, so I said my version of how I re tried to remember it. I said, Chokhangli Wanicha. And he goes, oh, yeah, yeah. So all of a sudden, we all look at Sage, Chakangli, eh? So to this day, we always, a lot of times we tell other guys, like Marlon and them too, so they'll always call Sage Chakangli. So that he, he earned himself an Indian name that day too, Chakangli. <laughs> there he is, my boy. Chikangli. <clears throat> which is which is the next song? Right? Hokey showed us this song. I don't know how old the song is, but it's uh and then I did find it on a where the porcupine singers were Ronnie and Melvin and them were singing it, I think in uh, Arizona or New Mexico. So I heard a, heard the version of it there. So I had asked Hokey last week, I said, Is there is there any songs that your dad might want to hear? So and he sent two songs and that was that first drum song and now this song, the street song. So a lot of these songs too, what I was showing my guys, like some of the other songs we're gonna sing, you'll hear the tune in there in like, since the 90s, the 2000s, you'll hear some songs from other groups that use part of those tunes to make their own songs. So you know, some of you might recognize some of the hooks on this song though, but it's a porcupine song.
Kind of get blank after a song sometimes like when you really focus. But it's really good, really good energy singing those songs. We had a practice on Monday to go over some of them songs to make sure it just made us more. As we've seen more people, and we're we're looking forward to the to the broadcast, and then especially when they got the old guys into it there to speak. And oh uh, well, yeah, I'm an old guy too, anyhow. But anyhow, uh, once they. Uh, once these guys got got in there to speak, hey, it just kind of really blew up and was good. I was really happy to hear that, but at the same time, I was just, oh my gosh, now we gotta not be messing up, messing these songs up. But so when we had that practice on on Monday, it was really fu really fun. It was really good. It felt so good to sing those songs, songs I only dreamt of singing. We sang a couple of them like that second song we sang. We heard Hokey and them sing it. So that's where we started singing it too, because whenever we sing that song, it just you can just feel that energy. A lot of them old songs, they, they're, they're, some of them are man-made, but they're also still sent from something out of, out of this world, are, and that uh, they help us. What's, uh, what's Brent saying wrong? So anyhow, uh, we'll be singing another. Uh, we learned three uh, Lakota songs, word songs. So this is going to be our third one. Third one. Uh, and they told me the meanings for them there, but I just know it's about my friend. Uh, my friend, we need you. I think that's what it means. It's another war song, battle, battle, battle song. I can't read fast enough. Yeah, it's always so good, even though, even though I sang for about 87, 97, 2007, over 30 years, I did finally get to meet Melvin a few years ago, like officially, and talk to him a bit. I wish I could have visited him more. It's just that I was pretty busy. And when I wasn't busy at uh, Rapid, I would go sit on the stage and just trying to recover from walking around on the cement all day, so. Hey, Daryl, right on, Daryl Zephyr. Yeah, so. But just doing this there, it helps. It helps from uh, not being at a power. It kind of, it really helps that, just to feel that energy, the good energy. I won't get into the, the energies that power is there. We're just there to try and make it positive, but just like what they talked about, what uh, Jim talked about last night too, and said uh, before money got involved, it was it was innocent and it was it was good back then. And back then they used uh, a lot of groups in the 60s, 70s. A lot of them used uh, bass drums, and because uh, traditional drums, when they say traditional, that means a high high drums, the way they're originally meant for natives to use that high drum, you ha there's rules that came along with that, eh? So a lot of guys kind of want to step out of bounds there, and so using a bass drum allowed them to do that, eh? But uh, I always just, always just try to be respectful because I was just learning when we started out, and I'm still learning. I'm very grateful, like I said, now I finally know some words to some songs that I always wished I knew when I, back in when I started, but now I finally got to know, hey, Fred, How's it going, man? Oh, huh. Okay, we're going to see this.
Hello, hello everybody. Anse. Uh, my name is Rocky Morin, and uh, I'm from Enoch, Enoch Cree Nation, uh, Treaty Six Territory. So I just wanted to share too. Uh, um, it's an honor to to be able to sing sing these songs, to learn them, to sing them, to share them, as a way of uh, paying tribute to the uh, Porcupine singers. And uh, I tuned in uh, yesterday and listened to uh, Jim and uh, Hokey, um, Bonnie. You know, they had a, a lot of good words, uh, good stories. I really enjoyed listening to that. 
um, listening to kind of how it was uh, long ago, I guess, the olden days and how powers were then and traveling and uh, how he spoke about uh, respect about the drum, respect about, about yourself, um, respect as a singer. Um, and it's pretty consistent with what, I, what I've heard too from a lot of old time singers in, in our area. Um, you know, presenting yourself in a good way, not only uh, your, your behavior, your conduct, but even the way you dress too, you know, that was pretty, uh, that was really good to hear. Um, also, you know, they talked about ceremony and how, um, how that was a part of, of uh, I guess, Powell's back in the day, you know, it was a part of it. Um, you know, giveaways, uh, naming ceremonies, those kinds of things. And today we still see, still see some of that. Also the story about, uh, <clears throat> about the four, four elders that got up to talk at a powwow and how uh, they talked about money coming into the powwow and how um, it was gonna change things. So I think that was pretty, um, pretty good to hear. It's a good reminder, I think, as to uh, how how we uh, as singers continue, continue to sing really for, for life, for uh, prosperity, good health, family, singing for our uh, communities and supporting one another. So I'm really grateful to hear, hear those words, um, as well as the, um, the other singers, the, the uh, original singers that talked earlier today, this evening as well. It was really nice to hear their insight as well, their stories. And um, I guess as a, as a younger younger singer, I always looked up to the older singers and listening to their stories, listening to, uh, I guess, really just their insight, their perspective on singing and the drum and what it means, and to be able to uh, help, I guess, help carry carry that those teachings in a good way. So I just wanted to, um, you know, acknowledge acknowledge the group again, acknowledge the singers, their families for their, uh, their good words, as well as their encouragement and uh, the, the prayers that they offer for us all as well. So I uh, thank you all for, for joining, joining us this evening. Hi, hi.
always flappy when you sing to the people. Mm -hmm. You guys see that latest one there? He messages uh, in boxes a uh, kishi and he tells him, uh, I notice you're always placing it. Uh, So the next song, uh, Hokie sang it last night, one of the old porcupine songs last night. So we're going to sing it because it's uh, also one of my favorite songs of all time. Over the years, I would, back when we still, even when the CDs came out, I still, my one truck I had still had a tape, a tape deck in there. Anyhow, so like on the way to Palo, sometimes... Sometimes I'd need to kind of pump myself up, so I had certain tapes I had, like a, one of them was a porcupine tape, another one was a Badlands tape, Sweetgrass tape, Red Nation tape. So certain songs from that I'll listen. I'll listen to the whole recordings, but as I'm getting closer to the power house, and I'll play, I'll play certain songs, and that will be, I call it my Dolomite, my Dolomite inspiring tape. And this was back in like about 15, 17 years ago. I used to listen to these. So this song, is, um, we're going to sing this one of my favorite songs of all time. So anyhow, oh, I'm kind of uh, more speechless. That's why I sent Rocky up here. Maybe he's standing beside me, maybe he came to talk again. That one? So, uh... Were the bonnie singing yesterday with the women? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep going. Oh no, maybe not. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I'm really, I'm really grateful for my, uh, my daughter, my daughter-in-law, and my uh, wife's nieces here that come to help us sing. And they really, they really make it a lot easier when you have backup singers. Most of our, most of our. Uh, years or 30 plus years we didn't maybe just a few six seven of them years maybe we've had backup singers most times we didn't have the privilege of having too many backup singers probably because we we're always just a bunch of guys just l squeezing into a van and it wasn't really appropriate for a girl to be riding in there with a bunch of stink guys so uh but i'm really thankful for my daughter and my daughter-in-law and my nieces here to come and help us out today and uh, they really make it a lot easier, like cover up a lot of our, like past few weeks we'd be singing uh, maybe four songs, four songs and after that we'll call it, well, let's get off live, I'll say. We're kind of slicing out and uh, after that we'll, uh, after that we'll, uh, when my buddies here talk about power, power food, oh my gosh, we talk about food, I'll have a subject after every song. It's, uh, my wife's getting after me because I was just looking, going through Instagram there and I'm just looking at all these food sites and all that, they're liking pictures of that. But anyhow, so I'm really grateful, so we're gonna sing this one there, hi, hi. <laughs>
hard way on the rim kind of just I mean, not something like that but where to put on the rim where to go and to try it so even when we're sitting around it's just So last week we did six songs. We did three of our own songs and three Sweetgrass songs. So that was our seventh song. We are getting a little stronger. Well, the guys are. I mean, I'm just in there for... Even my bass is wearing out. But anyhow, so... Kind of saving the toughest songs for the, for the last two. So this is our last song coming up. And then uh, the songs... One of the... One of the most... One of the most famous songs here. Well, that I see people really, really enjoying. So it's another straight song, but it's. I imagine everyone will will uh, will 
will recognize this song. <clears throat> Trying to take a break before we go on. Kind of a jokester around my guys. So, just kidding. So anyhow, uh, another thing too I was I wanted to mention was like uh, it's good to, if people decide to get their vaccinations and stuff like that. That's a person's prerogative.